ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ونبينا مولانا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا مولانا محمد صلاه دائمة مقبولة تعد بها ان حقه العظيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم اما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا مع الصادقين صدق الله على العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الأمين المقيم الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين موقع آدم بمنے بے سر و ساما مددے قبلائے دی مددے کعبائے ایما مددے پادری امنا رائے یا غوث آدم بی زنم تمز شیخ احمد رضا خان خود بے عالم بی زنم سیدی یا مرشدی شاہ مصطفیٰ خان زندہ بات مسلک سرکار عالی عالی حضرت زندہ بات یا الہی مسلک احمد رضا خان زندہ بات حفظ ناموں سے رسالت کا جو ذمہ دار ہے سیدی یا مرشدی شاہ مصطفیٰ خان زندہ بات حامل فیض رضائے مصطفیٰ امداد کن صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم امی و آلہی صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلاة و سلام علیکہ یا سیدی یا سندی یا حبیبی یا طبیبی یا رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم و علیہ آلکہ وَأَصْحَابِ كَا يَا رَحْمَتَ لِلْعَالَمِينَ Our praise is due to Almighty Allah The road and salam is upon the most perfect, exalted and glorified of Allah's creation Sayyiduna wa Mawlana Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam His blessings and salutations upon the Anbiya Ikiram اہلِ بیتِ اتھار صحابہِ کرام خلفہ راشدین تبعین تبع تابعین آئیمہ مشتہدین اولیاء کاملین and all those who follow the path and through the last day we thank Almighty Allah through His infinite mercy and through the wasilah of Rasul Akram Nuri Mujassam صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم for blessing us with the opportunity and giving us the topic to congregate to Salat al-Jum'ah and to prostrate in his most exalted court. Before continuing, let us all direct our hearts and our thoughts towards the holy and the sanctified court of the beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam and in drink so let us all together recite the Sharif Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina wa Nabiyyina wa Mawlana Muhammadin wa ala Rishina wa Mawlana Muhammadin صلاةً دائمةً محبولةً تعدي بها أنها انقه العظيم الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله It is by the grace of Almighty Allah and the abundant mercy of the beloved Rasul صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم that we are still reaping the blessings and the barakat of this Mubarak month of Rajabul Murajab. It is about to draw to an end. And you know, and I said last week, that as Rajab ends, the month of Shaban will come. And when the month of Shaban comes, then we know that Allah has given us a night in that month of Shaban that is going to come to us that Ibadat in half that night earns one the blessings and the reward of more than 400 years of Ibadat which is then the eve of the 15th of Shaban and then 
comes that night, which is the night of Qadr in the month of Ramadan, a night that is greater than a thousand months. When the month of Rajab comes, it announces, and as it leaves, it announces that we started off with the Ma'araj, where we remembered the most exclusive and the most unique journey of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam left this physical world and journeyed into the heights of the heavens beyond time, beyond place, beyond space where he went and with the eyes of his head he saw his almighty creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he was blessed with numerous gifts on that Mubarak night. We talked about it on the night of Mi'raj. Adha Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was blessed with numerous gifts on that eve of Mi'raj. And one great gift of Mi'raj is your salah and my salah. This namaz that we read five times a day this is through the blessing of that Ma'raj of the Bilal Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that is why it is stated in the Hadith of Mubaraka that the Ma'raj of a believer is his Namaz especially when he is in prostration when he is in Sajda in the court of Almighty Allah then that is his Ma'raj in other words the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went into the heights of the heavens and beyond the seven skies, beyond the Arsh, beyond the Kursi, beyond Sidratul Muntaha, and he brought for us this gift of Salah, this glorious gift of Salah. And his Ma'raj was that, and none can compare. But your ascension and my ascension, and our journey into the heights of the heavens, and being close to Almighty Allah in the sense that has been awarded to us is when you lower your head in the court of Almighty Allah is when you put your head in sajda and when you say subhana rabbi al-a'la then when you do that and when you say that then at that time you are in the barga of your Rabb to the closest level and this Mubarak gift is the gift that Allah's Nabi brought you. Allah's Nabi brought to us. And we must understand that you can never, you can never appreciate a gift without appreciating the one who gifted it. This is, this is logic. You and I don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand this. Okay? And even the rocket scientists don't understand. Okay? The condition is Iman. If you want to understand these things, then Iman needs to be mazboot. And you know when your Iman becomes strong, I'm going to come back to tell you about, about the gift and the one who gives it and the one who is gifted. The one who is given a gift, we'll talk about it, and the one who gives the gift. Just now, very, very quickly, and in Juma, the time is limited, so I, I try to be as quick as possible. But the time that your Iman will become mazboot, when your Iman will become strong, and you will be able to, to observe the manifestations of Iman, and you will be able to see the reflection of that faith in the mirror, of yourself and what is the mirror of yourself your heart the only time you will be able to see this tajalli and the only time that this iman will really become so powerful and bright that when you look into your heart you can see a reflection of your deen and your iman is when the iman reaches a level of perfection and it reaches a level of perfection how Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu taqullah All who believe or believers fear Allah 
Your iman becomes strong when you truly fear Allah. The iman increases in strength when a person truly fears Allah. And when else? وَكُونُ When he sits and he remains in the company of pious people. Because if you sit in the company of those who are evil, those who are obscene, every two words is swearing, every second, third word is talking about haram, then there is a fear that your iman will become very weak. It will affect your iman. An example without comparison for understanding a flame is there to give light. And if a flame is fueled with that which gives light, it will become brighter. And it will grow. But if that flame is under, or in, 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 not under something, but it is in the open air, and there is water or rain falling over it, what will happen to the flame? Or bujjaida. It will go off. Why? It is not in its natural environment. It has come out of that. And because it has gone towards that which is opposing to it, it will become weaker and it will extinguish. Without comparison, if you sit in the company of those who are deviant, badmazab, if you sit with those who are corrupt, if you sit with those who are sinful, then that light of Iman will start to extinguish. It will become weaker. And you start to say that how is it that Hose Azam could see that which I can't see? How is it that Khaja Gharibun Nawaz could see that which all of us together can't see? How is it that Sadir Park saw that which you and I can't see? How is it that Hadrat Mahdoom e Samna saw that which you and I can't see? How is it that Imam Ahl e Sunnah saw that which you and I can't see? The reason for that is because that that flame of Iman that was burning in their hearts was very radiant because they always kept the company of those whose hearts had the flame of Iman. Not difficult to understand. I hope you are following me. And I'm going to give you an example. I probably spoke about it before. And the example I'm going to give of this companionship is because on that day of 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 of, of Mi'raj, the 27th, that just passed us, marked the Ursaba Sarapa Quds of a very great personality also. Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Junaid Baghdadi radiallahu ta'ala. Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Junaid Baghdadi radiallahu an. Now, Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Junaid Baghdadi radiallahu an is that Mubarak and that blessed personality that we all know that he was the disciple before I tell you about it. And we talk about strengthening your iman and being in the company of the pious. Hadrat Junaid al-Baghdadi radiallahu an is that Mubarak personality who was the disciple and the murid of Hadrat Sayyidina Sarri Sakhti radiallahu ta'ala. That is why when you go to Baghdad Sharif, you will see the Murshid and the Murid are beside each other. Hadrat Sayyidina Sarri Sakti radiallahu ta'ala an. And Hadrat Sarri Sakti, look at company, I want to show company. Hadrat Junaid Baghdadi became Junaid because he was in the court of Sarri Sakti. Okay? And Hadrat Sarri Sakti is the Murid of who? Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Maruf e Karkhi. Look at the companionship. Hadrat Imam Maruf e Karkhi radiallahu an. And he is the disciple of Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Ali Raza radiallahu an. Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Ali Raza radiallahu an. And he is the disciple of Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Musa Qazim radiallahu an. Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Musa Qazim radiallahu an. And who is he? Who is he attached to? Who is his connection to? Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Jafar as Sadiq radiallahu an. And he is the son of who? Imam Baqir radiallahu an. And he is the son of who? Imam Zainul Abidin radiallahu an. And he is the son of who? Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Hussain Shahid Karbara radiallahu an. And he is the son of who? Mawla Ali radiallahu an. And he is the beloved of who? Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now this nisbat 
this connection, this com this contact that's there, and this companionship is that which strengthens that light of iman. And I'm giving you an example for you to understand. Hazrat said that Junaid Baghdadi radiallahu. Hazrat, even if I don't get to the rest of the topic of the Miraj another time, we've talked about it in detail on the big night. Hazrat Sayyidina Junaid Baghdadi radiallahu an is seven years old. I'm taking you back. Hazrat Sayyidina Junaid Baghdadi radiallahu is how old at that time? Seven years old. The narration that I'm presenting is seven years old. What do you and I do with our seven year olds? Ask yourself the question. Football? Cricket? You see, and that means that I'm giving my child the time that he needs by playing football, by playing cricket, now even not that, by gaming together with my son, by father and son sitting and competing with each other for hours and hours not remembering that the time of Salah has come and go. This is the hal. This is the condition of our community. Right now, if I'm wrong, you can say no, you are wrong. In most cases. Except for those whom Allah has guided them, to guide their children. What do we do with our seven year olds? This seven year old, Junaid Baghdadi radiallahu anhu, is in the company at that time of Hadrat Sarri Sakti radiallahu anhu. Look at what the parents did. They put him at the feet of a pious man itself. Why? Why? So that the manifestation of the pious will make him pious. They put him with Hadrat Sarri Sakti radiallahu anhu. He was attached to Hadrat Sarri Sakti from how old? Before that. But at seven years old, he is now, I want you to visualize this. That at seven years old, that personality that the world calls Imam Ta'ifa, Abu Qasim Sayyidina Junaid al Baghdadi radiallahu anhu, is at seven years old at the feet of who? Hadrat Sari Shakti radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And where do you take your seven year olds? Where do you take them? Don't tell me. How many of us take our seven year olds to the masjid? How many of us make sure we take them to the musalla for Salatul Fajr, wake them up and take them in the musalla of your home at least? When I'm saying musalla, I'm not meaning these Wahhabi places. Ah. I'm talking about your real musalla where you make sir. So much right. ah. Seven years old, you wake your child up and put him on the musalla or put her on the musalla. Where do we take our children at the age of seven? Take them for all the entertainment places. Take them to all the khurafat. And when they come to 10 and 12 and 14 years old, to come to Mawlana, can you give me a tawil? My son is gone off track. Who put him off track? Yes, Who did that? Who sponsored that destruction? We. We. Have you put him at the feet of a pious man? Have you put him on the feet of the ulama i haq Then that seven-year-old, when he grew up, you would not have to come to Maulana and say, can I have a ta'weez? That child will become your ta'weez. He will become your protection here and in the hereafter. Okay? So where do we take our children at seven years old? And look at Junaid al-Baghdadi at seven years old. He's at the feet of Hazrat Sari Sakti radiallahu anh. And where is he taking him? He's taking him to Madinatul Munawwara. He's taking him to Makkatul Mu'azzama. The seven year old is accompanying his murshid at that time. At that time, to Haramain Tayyabain. And when they are seated, at that time, Hadrat Sari Sakti is the Imam of his time. When they get to the Haram, to the Holy Haram of Mecca, the scholars come to meet him, the great scholars of that time. And the Jama'at grows until there are 400 Akabirin ulama. 400 approximately ulama sitting with Hadrat Sarri Shakti radiallahu ta'ala an. Now can you imagine that seven year old who is getting to see the face of 400 ulama who is getting to take the blessings of 400 ulama 
not just ulama but only of their time and he's doing that while sitting in the shade of the imam of his zamana hadrat asari sakti radhan can you understand the condition of the heart of that child can you understand the good fortune of that child i want you to look at our own lives and look at what we do with our children at the same at seven years old he is with sabi shakti radhiyallahu in the holy haram in makkah and 400 ulama are sitting there because you must know hazrat sabi shakti not only the mushrik he is also the mamo of hazrat junaid baghdadi radhiyallahu he is also the maternal uncle of hazrat junaid baghdadi radhiyallahu so they are sitting together and the then and and these giant scholars of the time are talking and having discussions they are having discussions they are not talking about how much money they made they are not talking about how many buildings they are going to erect they are not talking about how many this and how many that they are going to do what are they talking about the discussion the discussion is about shukr in the court of allah allah their discussion is about being grateful to allah for all the na'mats that he has given you that is the discussion of 400 ulama in the court of hazrat sayyiduna sarri shakti radhiyallahu anhu in the haram sharif today what do we do in the haram sharif how do people go and do what they supposed to do we are too busy making selfies we are too busy showing our photos to the world and doing haram which is forbidden at any time and more so in the haram of allah but here they are speaking about shukr about being grateful to allah all the ulama are having this discussion and as the discussion draws to a close hadrat sayyiduna imam sarri sakti radhiyallahu anhu looks at his maternal nephew and his murid seven year old junaid baghdadi radhiyallahu anhu and he says that would you like to include any of your views in this discussion aap bhi kuch farma de hey seven years old 400 grand scholars talking about gratefulness and gratitude in the court of allah shukar and hazrat e sarri shakti is saying to a seven year old do you know why he knew this was not any ordinary seven year old he knew that this is not just any ordinary plant and shrub this is the one that has been groomed by my hands nurtured with piety he says to him do you have anything to say about this other than junaid baghdadi out of humility today what has happened today somebody when even if the ulama i want to lecture or lecture today every second third person wants to grab the mic and start giving takrir why i think i know better destructive very destructive Yeah, seven year old is being said by his mother. Hadrat the Sayyidina Sarri Shakti to say something in front of 400 ulama. He didn't do that to tell him to say say something so he can show that my nephew is very powerful. He did it so that he can be included in the jamaat of those great scholars at that time. But Hadrat the Junaid Baghdadi when he hears Sarri Shakti saying add something to this discussion would you like to say something? when he saw that sarri shakti haram 400 ulama and a little boy is being said he lowered his head out of humility sir ko jhuka diya he bowed his head towards his heart but in reality what was he doing he was looking at that mirror of the heart that was already glowing in the age of seven and then he raised his head and he said oh jamaat of ulama based on the request of my sheikh and my mamu let me tell you what i think is gratefulness let me tell you what is shukar shukar is that you should not be disobedient to allah by way of the ni'mat that he has given you allah you should not be ungrateful to allah by way of the ni'mat which he has given you in other words allah gave you wealth but you are ungrateful to allah using that same wealth You are ungrateful to Allah by this body and this energy that Allah gave you, that you don't even use it to stand on the musalla and perform two rakats of salah. So He says, sugar is this. Sugar is this that you should not be disobedient to Allah by way of the nihmat and the bounties which He has blessed you with. 
and you should not use these na'mats as a means of disobedience to Allah and causing distress to others. This is shukar. When the ulama heard this, that a seven-year-old has given such an answer, they looked at him and they said, Oh, coolness of our eyes. Oh, coolness of our eyes. Whatever you said is the truth. And none of us can say better than what you have said. Hadrat Sarri Sarkti looks at Junaid al-Baghdadi with a smile and pride. He says, Oh, my beloved son, oh, my nephew, where did you learn such exemplary words? Yeah. I say, Mubarak, and such a beautiful explanation of shukr in such few words, where did you learn? Hadrat Junaid al-Baghdadi smiled and he said, Huzoor, it is the barakat of being in your exalted company. It is the barakat of being in your exalted company. I said this entire narration for us to understand this point. Keep the company of the pious and that radiance of Iman will help you and I to understand the beauty of being those people who recite the kalima La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah it will allow you the opportunity to recognize and understand those things which other people cannot. And all of this is because your iman will become stronger. That is why on that eve of Mi'raj, Allah gave us this gift of salah. When will you stand on the musallah without being told? You will do it when your iman is reaching a level of perfection. You will do it when the Iman and the faith that you have in you is drawing you towards Allah's ibadah. Then only you will do it. And if you find that you are not able to do this, then it is time to take stock of ourselves. We take stock of our businesses. We take stock of everything else. When will we take stock of our spiritual state? When will we take stock of our condition? Wait. Tomorrow, day after tomorrow, next week, next year, who saw it, moth can come in a split second and everything will be over. Keep this in mind. Discussion is long. Time is less. Inshallah, in the future, we'll discuss further. Allah, keep us with Iman. Let us leave the world with Iman. Those who are Allah, the Shibai, can say the Ajil. Those that have passed away in Ahl Sunnah, Allah, he told them in Jannatul Naheem. And those that are going through any difficulty, Allah, remove them from their difficulty. Special dua for Janab Jamil Khan. The father of our brother Shahbaz Raza in Delhi, who we made dua for just a few days ago, he passed away yesterday. Allah exalted him in Jannatul Naim. Khush Naseeb man passed away on the Shabay Ma'araj. And for this Mubarak day, Allah exalted him in Jannatul Naim. So may all of us get good deaths and may we leave this world with Iman. Uh, special dua for all those who have asked us to make dua, who is still, uh, some I remember, some I don't remember, who are Dubai from Phoenix. And well, Allah grant him Shifai Khan and Sayyid Ajal. Uh, Brother Zain Labdin, our Zain Bhai, Allah grant him Shifai Khan and Sayyid Ajal. And all the others, uh, Dr. Abdurrof. Dr. Abdurrof from Libya asked us to make dua for his sister. And the mother of Brother Faisal, who is extremely ill. We have been asked to make dua for them in, who are in Libya as well. Allah grant them Shifai Khan and Sayyid Ajal. Those we know of and know not of amongst the Arishim, Allah grant them all Shifa. Those that are going through Parishani and difficulty, Allah remove them from their, from their difficulties and their Parishani. Those that are going through any other hardships, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alleviate uh, their hardships. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, grant Shifa to all of them. Also our Vahid Bhai, I've been asked to make dua for Vahid Bhai, Allah give Shifa Islamin, Sayyid Ajal. And special dua, continue making dua for the Muslims, for the Arishim of Palestine. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower them with his mercy. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect their lives and their honor. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroy those who are trying.